This is Z transform example number one. Find the Z transform of a sequence, its region of convergence, and plot its pole zero diagram. Well, here's a general approach to this problem. We are given a signal X of N. We want to plot the signal, find its Z transform as a ratio of two polynomials in Z inverse, and then state the region of convergence. And we're also looking for the pole zero diagram. As we consider X of N, look specifically at the pieces here. We see a step function that starts at n equals 0. Here we see a reverse step function that ends at n equals minus 1. For plotting purposes, I recommend finding the maximum value of x of n first. In part b, we are looking for the z transform. Each of these terms is available in a z transform table. Finally, we want to find find the pole zero diagram of x of z, and also indicate the region of convergence. This is easier when you write the polynomials in terms of z rather than z inverse. For example, let's consider this case of a ratio of two factored polynomials. The polynomial started out as second order, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom each by z squared. That would give us z squared minus z on the numerator, and then we would take one z for each. So now we have the polynomials written out in terms of z rather than z inverse. The roots of the denominator are the poles, which we signify with an x symbol. And then the roots of the numerator are the zeros, which we signify with an o or circle symbol. All right, let's move on to the detailed solution. In part A, we need to plot x of n. This term that involves the step function u of n, we know that the step starts at n equals 0. That means we would have our first value of 1 third raised to the 0 power at n equals 0, that's 1. Then at n equals 1, we have 1 third. At n equals 2, we have 1 third squared and so forth. We see that the values begin at 1 and then decline rather rapidly as n increases. On the other side, we have a reverse step function. To see that, we know that the step function is active whenever its argument is greater than or equal to 0. We can then ask the question, what range of n are we talking about? I'll take the minus 1 and stick it on the other side. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1, and that means I also have to reverse the direction of the inequality. This tells us that the step function is active for n less than or equal to negative 1. Now 3 to the n at n equals minus 1 is 1 third. At n is minus 2, looks like 1 third squared, that's 1 ninth. We actually recognize the same value that we, same sequence values that we were seeing on the positive side. So this is a declining sequence as we go farther along in the negative direction. All right, the maximum value for our plot is 1, and that occurred when n equals 0. At n equals 1, we have 1 third. At n equals 2, we had 1 ninth. And for plotting purposes, you can look at that, and that's 0.111. Looks like that's right about here. Now turning to the negative side for a moment, as uh, we were discussing a moment ago, these values are actually the same on the other side of the origin. So I've calculated a couple other values that are significantly above zero, and we see this shape for x of n as a function of n. Now let's move on to part b. We're looking for the z transform of x, and we're also looking for its region of convergence. We want to express x of z as the ratio of two polynomials in z inverse. Let's refer to the relevant entries in a z transform table. Here 
Here we see our reverse step function. Here we see the regular step function. Also note the negative sign difference between the two. But the Z-transform equation looks exactly the same. So the difference here relates to the region of convergence. Now this form applies to the first expression. 1 third to the n times u of n in terms of its z-transform looks like this. Now to properly use what we find from the z-transform table, we will need to insert a negative sign. And then we can go ahead and use that form as printed. There's the region of convergence for each of these terms in the z-transform domain. Now x of z will be the sum of these two expressions. Again, initially we would write down plus, but then the negative sign was part of the definition of the z-transform. That's why I'm going to be subtracting the second piece here. Now we could be done at this point, except the problem statement asks us for the ratio of two polynomials in Z inverse. So let me get these over a common denominator. Let me distribute the negative sign. Looks like the ones cancel nicely. That's helpful. And we're left with this result in the numerator. In the denominator, I'd like to multiply out these two factors. And then I will collect like terms in terms of Z inverses. And this is what we need. The region of convergence will be the intersection of these two statements. We need the absolute value of z to be greater than one-third and less than three. That's the results for part b. Now in part c we want to plot the pole zero diagram and then also show this region of convergence. To plot the pole zero diagram we will use some of the intermediate results from part b. This is where we had the factor denominator. It's easier for plotting purposes if we have everything expressed in terms of z rather than z inverse. We have a second order expression in the denominator, so I will multiply the numerator and the denominator by z squared. So I'm not changing anything, I'm just rearranging the position of the z's. Now we can clearly observe that we have a zero at the origin. This gives us a pole at z equals one-third, because when I insert z equals one-third into that expression, we have one-third minus one-third is zero. Here we have a pole at z equals plus three. Here's my complex plane, and I'm also indicating the unit circle. Get the axes calibrated here, and here's my zero at the origin. I have a pole at z equals one-third, it's right here, and a pole at z equals three, which would be located right there. Finally, let's get the region of convergence on the plot. We have three and one-third we have two circles whose radii are dictated by the pole locations, and that becomes the region of convergence. It's an annulus shape in this case. And that wraps up this example.